winner of this game, hey, it's simple. They go to the Rose Bowl. In the event of a tie, USC will get to go to Pasadena. And right now, the Trojans have the ball on the two and a half yard line on the verge of scoring. And a third down and goal situation coming up. Rob Johnson, the man you're looking at right there, has had a phenomenal second half. UCLA with one timeout left. USC with one timeout left. Folks, if you're just joining us, the Trojans have only six yards rushing all day, have not been able to run the ball against UCLA's defense. You would think right now they're going to put pressure on the corner to give them the option to run or pass, whichever one is committed to. And the pass got them to where they are now. Two big plays in particular to Johnny Borden and to Ken Grace. And West Virginia beats Miami. What a day. They do pass. comes up, reads it, and makes the interception. Of the Rose Bowl game. UCLA, the road team in this ball game. It's a low skittering kick, and it goes into the end zone and out of the end zone, and will come out to the 20-yard line. And that may be the first indication of nerves right there, as Keith Jackson had the ball go off his hands and go out of bounds. So the man who comes out to take the snap of the ball is named Darrell Bevel. He's a 20, almost a 24-year-old sophomore. He was on a Mormon mission for two years, played first at northern Arizona and you see the numbers on the right hand side to tell you of his quality Brent Moss is the top running back in the Big Ten as far as numbers are concerned or 1400 plus yards very good one Montgomery the fullback a terrific blocking back for him the big story of the Wisconsin football team may however be in the offensive line as we have the first snap and it's who else but Brent Moss and there is an example of what he can do to you. That's an eight-yard gain. And it comes as a result of the offensive front for the Wisconsin Badgers. They're big and they're tough guys. Joe Panos is a perfect example of the kind of people they are. 6'3", 290, walk on. Came in, hunkered down, got the job, and nobody could move him out. So it is second down and two for the Badgers. Jameer Miller shifts outside. He comes on a blitz and gets a piece of the action at about the snap of the ball point. No gain on the play for Moss, who is a 5'9", 205-pound junior from Racine, Wisconsin. Wisconsin wants to run the first two plays out of the box. This is the way they made their, uh, their living this year, running the football. UCLA not quite as big up front but a lot quicker and a lot faster. Therefore, Wisconsin says, we'll run right at you. You're not going to run east and west on UCLA. They've got too much team speed. It is third down and still about two. Moss again. Comes right in behind Joe Panos. And he's got his first down as he goes to the 31-yard line. Stark and Panos on the right side, and Brent Moss knew exactly where he wanted to go and got right behind him and, and got in there for the first down. The defensive front for UCLA offers Isaiah Case and Werner. The linebackers, the bell cow there is Miller. He's a big, lanky guy at about 6'6". They're all good, all four of them, very good and very fast. Marvin Goodwin is the man who made the interception in the end zone to stop UC USC in that annual battle that put UCLA in the Rose Bowl. And here's Bevel now for his first pass to the sideline. The pass is good to Michael London. And London gets it past the marker and another Wisconsin first down. That's only the second catch of the year for London. 
He's a late bloomer. His first catch came over in Japan when they played Michigan State. That was his first catch of the year. Bevel, a good passer, led the, led the Big Ten in passing, percentage passing. Alvarez, the 1993 Big Ten Coach of the Year, first time in school history at Wisconsin. So from the near the 44-yard line, the Badgers go to work, give that ball back to Moss again, and he's up across the 45 on that carry. Give him a two-yard pickup, and Carrick O'Quinn brought him down. He is a senior from Westlake Village, California. Terrence Michael Donahue is the coach of the UCLA Bruins. He was a 186-pound defensive lineman on the 1966 UCLA team that beat Michigan State here in the Rose Bowl. He's a local. He came right out of Sherman Oaks, out of Notre Dame High, went to junior college, and it was J.D. Morgan who brought him to the campus as a coach. Second down and eight. Double back to throw. Gets it away to the 50. It's across midfield to J.C. Dawkins. And that is very close to, in fact, is going to be another first down. Dawkins working against Teddy Lawrence, number two, just starts in and then back to the outside. Lawrence slips a little bit. First couple of passes complete by Bevel, and that's a big confidence filler when you come all the way out from the Midwest. It's a nice drive so far for the Badgers. It is not a first down. He hit the chalk about a yard and a half short of the first down. I wonder who will get the ball. Well, he had him behind the line of scrimmage and couldn't hold him. And Brett Moss gets the first down. Nikosi Littleton had a hold of him behind the line of scrimmage, but Moss would shake him off and get it past the marker. A big offensive front and a little back like Moss. Moss is 5'9 and 205. The defensive line stops him. But he squirms to pick up the first down. Will is a very important factor in the game of football. You just saw Summit right there. First down, Badgers at the Bruin 45. Moss getting a lot of work in the early going, and there's nothing on that carry. Jameer Miller, number 95, right there. The game story now from Bob Greasy. Well, let's take a step back and see what both of these teams want to do for UCLA they have to create and convert turnovers they led the nation in that department this year and of course JJ Stokes he caught 17 touchdowns this year he has to be involved offensively Wisconsin they want to run the ball and avoid long passing situations they've done that all year they are not good enough if they don't have that run game to rely on call it second down and nine it's Moss again, slips as he tried to plant and make the cut. Marvin Goodman was right there blocking his way. He tried to cut past Goodman and went down. Loss of a yard on that play. They're looking now at what they don't want. Third and long. Exactly right, and this is where UCLA's defense now gains the upper hand. Bob Field, the defensive coordinator, can send in five and six defensive backs. We call that a dime defense or a dime package. And they are really tough in this dime package, as you see the nose tackle case being helped off the field. Yeah, Case got caught in the bottom of that melee, and uh, he's walking off quite gingerly. George Case is a sophomore. He is from Valencia, California. Right, 59, right in the middle of the screen. That's the offensive guard, the left guard. That was Rudolph trying to reach block. Just got a part of his lower leg. It's third down and about 11. The Ramos, number two, has been the prime target all season. The tight end, Michael Rohn, however, is a very big target and a good one. It won't be Rohn. He's blocking. The pass is thrown deep for DeRamis. Out of bounds. Caught the ball, but he's out of bounds. And it was a good throw by the young quarterback, Bevel. He read the defense correctly, threw it to the correct guy. He was just covered. Oh, we got some great plays. His foot was on the bow, out of bounds. Everybody's making good plays. The official made the right call. DeRamus sends a message with the catch, though, doesn't he? Yes. Bevel sends a message. 
It is Paul Guidry back to return it for UCLA. Paul Guidry is a redshirt freshman from Cerritos. Sam Bight has had only 14 punts returned this season. He's good at knocking the ball out, killing it deep, and he's going to get this one killed pretty deep, like the one-yard line. Vince Zolo down the market, officially at the two. Indeed, a happy new year to all of you as UCLA gets its first possession of the 80th Rose Bowl game at their own two-yard line. Officially, they're going to call it the three. I don't know why the ball's touching the two. Wayne Cook turns and hands the ball off to Ricky Davis, and Davis wiggles his way out to about the eight. Wayne Cook is the young man we told you has been down with the flu, but look at that. 118 consecutive passes without an interception. Why it would form the heart of any coach to have a quarterback that could do that. J.J. Stokes, however, is the man you want to watch. Number 18. He's 6'4". He's 214 pounds. And, I mean, this big guy can really haul it. Second down at about four. And Skip Hicks is the tailback now. He is a freshman from Wichita Falls, Texas, and he can run. But they don't let him get around the corner. They stop him at the 11-yard line, so he's going to be a couple of yards short. Up front for UCLA, the bell cow is Big Vaughn Parker. Everybody says he's one of the best in the country. Craig Nowitzki up there has played three different positions. He can go at center, he can go at guard, and he's an all-conference back. And that is an outstanding offensive line. He's very athletic. Some say maybe the best ever at UCLA. Well, Jonathan Ogden is a 315-pound 6'9 guy at that left tackle slot covering the blind side of the quarterback and very good at it. Out of the shotgun, the ball is handed off to Hicks, and here he comes around the corner, and he's got the first down. He's got some daylight, and it's a big play for UCLA. Hicks can fly. You let him get around the corner, and you're going to watch his pockets for a long time. This play is just well blocked. It's an old sweep. It's an old Green Bay sweep. 71, Nowitzki gets his guy. Washington is number 30. He gets a piece of uh, Gales, number three. Third and short, that's a big first down. Get out of your own uh, shadow of your own goal post and get some, uh, some breathing room. Ball is at the 29-yard line and a first down, and Ricky Davis is back in at tailback for UCLA. Cook, first pass of the ball game. There's Stokes. And the ball goes to the Wisconsin side of the field. First down at the 41. And a penalty flag is thrown on the far side of the field. Kenny Gales is the man who has the dreadful responsibility of covering Stokes. I mean, that folks is a chore. Well, Wisconsin, the defensive backs, including Gales, have been hearing so much about the All-American J.J. Stokes. They've been looking forward to this matchup. And on the first pass of the game by UCLA, it goes to J.J., and Gales was beaten badly on the play. John Laurie out of the Dead big ball. eight. Personal foul, offense, 15-yard penalty. Late in the uh, conversation between Stokes and Gales, I think Stokes kind of reached out and kind of punched at him. The official at the, now watch the official, he gets in there very quickly as he sees it gonna jump in there and that's good now watch Stokes right there he reaches out and punches him in the face and that's good call both of, both of these teams Keith are the least penalized team in their conferences so not a lot of penalty yards yards for either one of them and they're both jacked up sky high because neither has been here in a while last time Bruins were here 86 last time Wisconsin was here 63 James Milliner is in there now at the deep spot. Runs the ball in the middle with Ricky Davis. And Davis, who had a huge ball game against Southern California in their big showdown over at the Coliseum. The defensive front for Wisconsin is led by Lamarck Shackerford. He's another guy that very few people wanted. Showed up, went about his business, and that defensive front has 102 career starts, which tells you they've been there. They've seen just about everything. Good linebackers. 
and Kenny Gales is the cover man with the chore of trying to handle J.J. Stokes today. Second down and eight. Cook hands it off. And Ricky Davis will have a couple of yards on the carry. So they're probably looking at third and about six as we check in with Lynn Swan. Keith, UCLA's offense is high power with J.J. Stokes' talent alone. But look at the tremendous height advantage he has over the cornerback. The first team and second team cornerbacks for Wisconsin, 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 6 1 and 6 2. You gotta go to him and let him go up for the ball. Well, they've been doing it all season and it's worked. And he is going to be flanked out to the bottom of your picture now. And Gales is looking at it. Number three. Here comes Davis in motion. He's a pretty good receiver, too. Cook's pass goes for Stokes. He's into the middle of the field. And it takes a couple of Badgers to put him down. First down and a penalty flag as uh, the fight goes on with Stokes trying to shake off the smaller man. And it's Reggie Holt who finally wrestles him down. Bob Holliday is the umpire. Bill Spexma is the head linesman and Daryl Lewis, the line judge. And here's John Lawrence. Second penalty on UCLA. They're hurting themselves. Here's Stokes right here. He's just going to go down and hook up in the middle of the field. Motion outside of him. Cook sees him wide open and gives him the ball. Now, if you're Stokes, you're not, you know, you're not real big and strong. You're kind of tall and thin. I wouldn't want to be taking on too many defensive backs. If they got a hold of you, just go down. He thinks he's made out of barbed wire. Uh-huh. Field judge is Terry Porter. The side judge, uh, Ron Leapsack. The back judge is David Ames. And uh, Steve Usek, Us Uscheck is the alternate. And as we told you, they are from the Big Eight. Balls at the 46-yard line. We're at third and three for the throw. Third down and three. Shotgun. Double wide. Bottom of the picture. Stokes goes the other way and hits. Uh, gets the ball. Shakes a man. And Stokes is all the way down to the 17-yard line. So Stokes shakes off Gales this time and wins that skirmish. And this is what Wisconsin had in mind, Barry Alvarez, when they came to this ball game and trying to handle J.J. Stokes. We're going to double Stokes some. We're going to play him a soft zone. We're going to play him a tough zone when we double. Uh, when we man up, we'll double him. Uh, we've got a disguise, and we don't, I don't want that quarterback to know what we're going to be in until the ball snaps. Well, they have I not doubled him. We have to execute once the ball, once he's taking the football. Yeah, well, they have not doubled him yet, Keith. Every time he's yep. caught the ball, it's been single coverage. Right. And the disguise he's talking about, the uh, cadence for UCLA has been long enough that by the time he gets the ball, Cook, the quarterback, that he can read the coverage. He has three catches for 74 yards. Davis carried on that last play to pick up a couple of yards from the 17 to the 15. But that play that where they had the big catch by Stokes, they had three three people come to the bottom of the picture as wide out. Trips on this side and Stokes went the other way. And so for a moment, uh, probably was lost. Except for Gales, and he couldn't handle it. Second down and eight. Split. Got away from it. No, he didn't either. Somebody had him by the foot. Number 47, Eric Unverzak, had him by the foot and wouldn't turn it loose. Wisconsin is not a big blitzing team. But when you get down inside their 20-yard line, Dan McCarney, the defensive coordinator, they'll come after you. Of course, when you blitz, you put single coverage on all of the receivers. That's why when, when a team does blitz, it's kind of, uh, you're either going to get the quarterback sometimes or you're going to get burned because of the single coverage. Ball outside the 17-yard line. It's third down and 11, and Cook is in the shotgun. Very sore throat. His voice may not last all day. Hands the ball to Davis, and Davis slices over the right side, finds some daylight to the 11-yard line. So it'll bring up fourth down, and here comes the kicking team. And this is a team that has been very successful for UCLA, both punting and place kicking. Bjorn Merton from uh, 
Centerville, Virginia, has scored 91 points on the season. 20 out of 25 in field goals. This is a 28-yard drive. The holder is Jeff Clark. The snapper is Paul Pernicki. The snap was off the mark. The hold was a little late, but Merton hit it solid and puts UCLA on the board. Three to nothing at 4:16 of the first quarter. We mentioned that UCLA has got to be able to throw the football. J.J. Stokes, not only All-American and single covered right there by Gales, but also the 93 Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year. I suspect that the next time that UCLA gets the ball, there's going to be some double coverage going toward number 18. Merton is ready to kick it off. Keith Jackson and Terrell Fletcher are waiting for it. UCLA out to a 3-0 lead, 4-16 to play in the first quarter. This kick is up high, up into the sun, looking at three-yard line, Jackson. And 20, and 21, 22, and that'll stop him right there. Coming up tonight on ABC Sports, finale of our college football bowl triple header, undefeated West Virginia. Still believing it's got a shot at a national championship. Meet the SEC champion, Florida Gators, USF and G Insurance Sugar Bowl. That's right after the Rose Bowl game here on ABC Sports. Jake uh, Kelchner is healthy now and ready to play. It should be a great game. That's listed as an 87-yard scoring drive. It's not true because of the penalties. They had 112 yards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two penalties were flagged on them in that particular possession. But they overcame them and got the three. Now Bevel has uh, Moss and Montgomery behind him, and Moss with the ball, looks for some daylight, finds some from the 22 to about the 26. We mentioned that J.J. Uh, Stokes was the player of the year in the Pac-10. Well, Moss is the offensive player of the year in the Big Ten, Brett Moss. Ten straight games with 100 yards or more rushing for Brent Moss. Second down and six. Moss over the left side. And close to a first down. Brent Moss, the ball carrier, very close to a first Depends down. Depends on the mark. Rod Smalley made Rod the Smalley is the man uh, who Put got him first down. and moved the chains. First down, Badgers. Take a look from behind that offensive line. 67, the left tackle for Sagan. 32 is Moss, the fullback. You know, it's the offensive line will get you an opening, a little crease. But then these backs, Moss and Fletcher, who will be in in a little bit, can do so much on their own. Matt Nyquist now checks in at a tight end position. And on first down, a pass play. Goes to Moss. And a couple of three yards on it. We have not seen Fletcher as yet. Moss got the call. He went for over 1,400 yards. If Fletcher gains 68 yards today, he will go past 1,000 yards for the season. There's a look at Fletcher, 41. With He's the darter. Yeah. He's yeah. Quick. Now, he is the darter. Moss is more of the... The uh, guy that's going to run over you. Balls at the Badger 30. Fletcher will come in normally after two or three series. This is the second series for Wisconsin. He got more than I thought he did. He got five. So it's second and five. Look how deep he is. Looks like O.J. sitting back there that far from the line of scrimmage. Picked the hole, picked the right hole, didn't he? Takes the football for another Wisconsin first down. Tommy Bennett wrestled him down and put the ball right near midfield. Ten carries, 39 yards for Brent Moss. Says he's coming back next year. Going to play his senior year with Wisconsin. Nine of the 11 offensive players for Wisconsin are coming back too, so they'll be a force in the Big Ten next year. Lord, they're going to need them too with their schedule. Back goes Bevel to throw it. Short to the sideline, J.C. Dawkins second catch. And Dawkins will have another first down for Wisconsin near the UCLA 36-yard line. Nice mixture of run and pass 
Brad Childress calling the plays for Daryl Bevel. Bevel completing 69% of his passes. That led the Big Ten. Bevel had first gone to college at Northern Arizona, then went on his Mormon mission, and Childress stayed in touch with him, and lo and behold, brought him to Wisconsin, where he's the starting quarterback. Childress was the offensive coordinator at Northern Arizona, and then had, when he was on his Mormon mission was Bevel, he had ended up at uh, Wisconsin and then brought him up there. Almost dropped the ball, lets it go deep. Flag. No flag, I don't see a flag. Yep, there is one back there. I thought I saw it for a moment, and then it fell on the red and I lost it. Teddy Lawrence covering J.C. Dawkins, and he ran up his back. Now in college football, it's a 15-yard penalty and a first down. The, the man on the right side, Teddy Lawrence, number two, is just going to run him over him a little bit early. I don't think he would have caught it. I don't think he would have caught it anyway. Right there is the foul, and it's a nice call by the official. I don't think he catches this, even if Lawrence doesn't interfere with him. But that's not to say that it shouldn't be a foul. The foul is there. So Lawrence sets his jaw and settles in the secondary, and Wisconsin has a first down at the UCLA 21-yard line, with the Bruins leading 3-0 at 1.15 to go in the first quarter. It has been a quick Quarter. Who's wearing mom on his foot? Teddy Lawrence. So you got a timeout called right here as the Badgers need to talk. My stars, look at this pretty stuff from Drew Essikoff. Pretty fancy. All right, the red and white crowd on their feet, rooting for their Badgers. They've got a first down at the UCLA 21 yard line. And the Brewers are leading 3 0 as we close out the first quarter of play. This is Brent Moss, who has played the whole quarter. And he'll get a yard or so before Jameer Miller, 6'4, 245, takes him down. Miller has said he will go pro after this season is done. It was an All American this year, and uh, I'm sure Terry Donahue is not happy about losing him. And if he, in fact he does continue with those thoughts to go pro. Terrell Fletcher is into the ball game for the first time now. He's been at the offensive coach's elbow from the very beginning, waiting for the call. And now number 41 is sent in there with fresh legs. He's the darter, remember. Second down and eight. Bevel rolls it, throws it. And it is incomplete, intended for Michael Rohn, the tight end. UCLA is not going to give you a lot of time to be uh, going around with that kind of uh, play action stuff. They'll eat you up. Monday night, ABC Sports will go to San Francisco. Jerry Rice, Steve Young, and the NFC West champion 49ers against the Philadelphia Eagles. It's the season finale of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, here on ABC Sports. Al Frank and Dan, and of course Minnesota's 14 to 9 win over the Redskins took some of the mystery out of the NFC playoff alignment yesterday. Third down and eight. Fletcher is the deep man. In motion. Here they come. Devil throws it to him. He's got it. He went the wrong way, but he got away. And he's got a first down inside the five. If he took that ball to the middle, he probably scored. But he gives Wisconsin a first and goal inside the UCLA four. Bevel does a nice job. There's a little blitz going on here. Edwards 23, a linebacker. Bevel gets rid of it. He wasn't blocked at all, but he gets rid of it before anybody gets to him. And then Fletcher makes a nice catch. And Fletcher has a little bit more mobility, a little quickness and agility than Moss does. He's in there on third downs to catch the passes out of the backfield and puts Wisconsin inside the five-yard line. That's a heck of a catch. Moss is back now at the deep back position. First and goal. It'll officially go into books as the three. And Moss cuts it in the middle. Touchdown.
Rick Schnitzky for the extra point now. Bevel does the holding. Down the middle with just 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Wisconsin goes 78 yards and takes the lead 7 to 3. Now, watch the left side of the screen. Go ahead and run it. Watch the left guard and the right uh, guard. The center, Raymer, slips through. A huge gaping hole there to the left side. That offensive line will get a good push. And, and the two backs. Watch the line there. That's uh, Stark, number 60, that chops the defensive man. That creates the gap that allows Moss to get into the end zone. And the red and white from the middle of the end zone to the right all the way to beyond the middle of the field at the other end of the Rose Bowl is predominantly red and white. I think there's more than 40,000 of them here. John Hall will kick it off for Wisconsin. Bevel is five out of seven for 53 yards. Deep for UCLA, Derek Ayers, 25. And Andy Colbert, 39. They're both freshmen. One true, Colbert. One red shirt, Ayers. And they're pretty good. If you line these two teams up and had a foot race at 11 positions, UCLA probably would win at least nine of the races. The kick is not very long. It's at the 11-yard line for Colbert. Whoa, see what I mean? feet are so quick so he brings the ball beyond the 25 to the 27 where the Bruins will go to work and uh, Kenny Gale takes a deep breath puts his hat on as tight as he can and goes back out onto the field to play cornerback against J.J. Stokes. That Wisconsin scoring drive nine plays the first for a touchdown there's a look at Gales Wisconsin on their first drive had it for ten plays as you take a look at J.J. Stokes. Ricky Davis is the tailback. I'm about gone. This will close out the first quarter of play. This is Davis. Ricky will pick up about three yards. And after one quarter, at the 80th playing of the Rose Bowl game in Pasadena, California, it is Wisconsin, seven, UCLA, three. A very prominent place in the progress of World Cup soccer which is the 1994 feature in fact the championship game will be played right here Ricky Davis remains the tailback it is second down and seven for UCLA that is Stokes in motion and Cook rolls it penalty flag he throws it to Stokes JJ dancing around a bunch of red shirts jump all over him but let's see about the penalty flag it's thrown by a man who might call holding. Ken Gale defending for Wisconsin. Offside. That man also calls that. Here are the numbers for the first quarter. And pretty balanced, uh, although the first downs are in big favor for Wisconsin. But Wisconsin has had the ball in two possessions, and UCLA has had it for only one possession. Time of possession about the same, and total yards a little bit in favor of UCLA. But the uh, numbers pretty even through the first quarter. We've been talking a lot about J.J. Stokes. I want to tell you that number four, Kevin Jordan, is on the field as well, and he is the fastest man on the field for either team. The ball is thrown by uh, Cook to Stokes. Stokes. Short completion and not quite enough for a first down. There's an isolate. It's a double coverage now. Messenger 29 has help behind him. That's why he's so tough. But the, he's going to get the ball anyway. When you're 6'4", you can kind of screen them off. Every four times he touches a football, he scores a touchdown. He caught 68 passes this year, 17 touchdowns for J.J. Stokes. But before we put him in the Hall of Fame, let me tell you that he's only a junior and talking about going out next year. 
But Kevin Jordan is, when you get to big play time, he had more really big, big plays, that is distance plays, than Stokes did. Now let's check in with Lynn Swan. Keith, when you've got a receiver like Stokes, you have to respect him as a cornerback, but you can't give him too much respect. One of the things I've noticed that the cornerbacks for Wisconsin are just giving him entirely too much room. If you do that, he'll catch him underneath you all day long and hurt you bad. That fellow there in the uh, headset and the blonde hair, Rick Neuheisel, who was a quarterback at UCLA, got a chance, made the most of it. Now he's back coaching. And uh, James Miller carrying the sophomore from Alexander, Virginia. And it does not appear uh, that he got the first down. They probably will want the change here, and they'll take time for the change. A lot of freshmen and sophomores and juniors on this UCLA football team. I was talking to Terry. I uh, had, uh, <laughs> had lunch with him the other day. <laughs> really did. <laughs> and he uh, introduced me to J.J. Stokes, and he said, J.J., come over here. I want to introduce you to somebody. And then he asked me, he says, you're not, now you're not going to be going out. You're not going to the pros this year. He says, no, coach. He says, I'm going to be around. He says, I'm going to be back. Sure. So, um... He was not a highly recruited young man out of college a couple of years, I mean, out of high school. Only three schools were interested in him. They thought he was too thin, thought he was a tweener, maybe a tight end, and he didn't have that great speed. He was 4'7", but he's increased it with, uh, uh, with some uh, strength, uh, weight work. Cook throws it. Stokes catches it and gets the first down just across midfield. He may come back. I'm not saying to you that he definitely is coming out because he hasn't had to declare himself yet. But I guarantee you one thing, he's good enough to play on Sunday right now. Well, this is single coverage out here. He's going to slip a little bit on the field but has the ability to stay on his feet. Cook outside the pocket. Easy pickup of the first down. Cook's doing well. Uh, Keith, we were That's concerned it. about maybe... Yep. He might be a little bit weak, but uh, throwing the ball well. Well, didn't you say earlier that uh, quarterbacks are sometimes better when they're a little puny? Well, they got the right kind of uh, medication in them. Yep. Uh, ball is handed off up the middle to Ricky Davis, a senior out of Houston, Ricky Texas. And uh, Davis will pick up about a yard on that carry. The aerial picture is coming from the Goodyear Blimp Eagle, based in Carson, California. The man at the controls today is Tom Mattis out of Huntington Beach, California. Hi, Tom. Got to be a nice ride today. There's barely a zephyr fluffing the flag. It's a gorgeous day, isn't it? Second down and nine. Cook is six out of six for 95 yards so far in the game, and all of the passes have been thrown to J.J. Cook. This one... Sales out of bounds, incomplete, and this one was intended for Brian Allen, the tight end from Valencia, California. Brian slipped down, lost his footing on the sideline. Turf looked like it's very good. You walked on it yesterday. It's yeah, nice it's in great shape. Yep. It's in great shape. Uh, Third and nine. Wisconsin all up there looking like they may want to blitz. Now they peel off. Right. And down goes Cook. What do you do? Somebody step on his foot? The stumbles coming away from center. You know, when the, when the defense gets up there and fakes like they're going to blitz, not only does it concern the quarterback, but it also concerns the offensive lineman, the center, and the guards in there. Who am I going to block? Is he going to blitz? You know, they start talking to each other. Darren Shager, the punter for the Bruins, averaging 42 yards on the season. Left puts it very high. There's a penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. A fair catch is called by Keith Jackson, and it'll give Wisconsin pretty good field position up around the 26-27 yard line. But let's see what... The man from Big Eight country has to say. John Laurie indicates offside against the defense. They may want to punt that again. It is not enough for a first down. Bentley on the play. A 
obviously not enough since it was fourth down and almost 15. Right. I would think they'd want to kick it again because it was not a very good punt, and they do. One of the strengths of this UCLA team is their kickers. Both their place kicker and their punter were all packed in this year, and their place kicker was All-American, so their kicking game has been outstanding. There's Merton right there. We mentioned the freshman All-American kicker. Wisconsin's going to have to burn a timeout because they didn't have a receiving team on the field. They were not prepared for a re-kick, and they had to call timeout and regroup because they were all screwed up. Scott Nelson averaging just under nine yards per punt return. He's had eight of them on the season. Is back to receive the kick from Darren Shager. He wanted a re-kick after the five-yard penalty because, one, it moves him up the field a bit. And uh, first one wasn't all that good. He hangs this one better, but again, it's not that deep. And Nelson is able to come fair out catch. for the 20 and Why fair catch it. So it's only a 27-yard punt. Tomorrow night on ABC begins with a new episode of America's Funniest Hour. Then the new year brings a new episode of Lois and Clark and then the man. Clint Eastwood in Heartbreak Ridge. Up, two, three. It's all tomorrow night starting at 7, 6 Central Time on ABC. Clint and the Marines. Heartbreak Ridge. Mark Montgomery is the single back right now, and uh, his coach says he's one of the best. He thinks this guy will be playing on Sunday because he primarily is a blocking back in the Wisconsin scheme, but he said he can make somebody a great ball carry very quick. Carries there for a couple of yards, a senior out of St. Paul, Travis Kirschke takes him down. Number 98, wearing the white shirt gear. Remember the name, Kirschke, 6'5", 255, true freshman from Yorba Linda. Liable to be on somebody's All-American a couple of times before this is done. Brings up second and six for the Badgers. Fletcher is in the ball game now. Terrell Fletcher had a big run against Michigan State in that decider over in Tokyo. Searches a bit. Can't throw it in the daylight. He's dropped at the 26. Jameer Miller and... Uh, Here's a look at the AP Top 10 today. Of course, the top three are playing later. Notre Dame is tied. Auburn is not playing because they're on probation. Tennessee lost. a and is tied with Notre Dame. Florida is later on ABC. Two pretty good surprises there, aren't you? Yeah, Miami getting beat and Tennessee getting beat. That's Miami didn't just slam the door on Miami. Yeah. Third down and four. Bevel throws it. Too high. The minute he let it go, he dropped his head. Knew he had thrown the ball too high. No way Lee Duramus could reach it. And the Badgers will have to punt. That's the first time that UCLA has stopped them defensively. They've had the ball three times, and that's the first time they've had them three and out. Might hit the first one pretty well. Gidry is back to return. Good spinner, though, and it's fair coverage and fair catch and ball. It's a pretty good punt and very good coverage. His first one was 44. This one is 43. Three. Wisconsin leads UCLA with 10 minutes and 47 seconds to play in the first half. Darrell Bevel pacing the sidelines, fussing because he missed that pass. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, and Lynn Swan. Voices on this telecast from ABC Sports as UCLA goes to work from their own 32-yard line. Flip. Passes away, and the pass is intercepted. It is Jeff Messenger who stole it, the man who leads the Big Ten in interception, and he came diving in and just literally picked his pocket. 
It was intended for Jordan. It is up here. He's just going to run an out route. The linebackers are going to blitz, so it's single coverage. Messenger at the top of the screen is going to do a nice job inside technique. The ball is thrown a little bit to the inside of the field. Messenger now has seven interceptions on the year. This could be not practicing, uh, Keith. That ball is thrown behind him. Should have been thrown more to the sideline. Maybe a reason uh, being that he hasn't practiced. String is broken. He had thrown 126 passes without an interception, and now Messenger gets one. And Wisconsin to the attack. And the UCLA 43, and Terrell Fletcher with that carry will pick up about two yards. Matt Werner and James. Go back and take a look and see if that... Uh, Interception may have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. The ball's at the 41 yard line, where it'll be second and seven. 47 is uh, Unverzat. Yeah, he hit it. Looked like it. No, knuckleball. Not a, you know, quarterbacks don't throw perfect spirals all the time, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just because it's not spiral doesn't mean it was tipped. <laughs> Bevel gets it away. Thrown for his tight end. That's intercepted by UCLA, number 22, Marvin Goodwin. The ball ricocheted off the tight end road and into the arms of Goodwin. UCLA leads the nation in taking the ball away in interceptions and fumble recovery. A little pressure by Edwards, the linebacker. This ball is thrown well enough to be caught right here. But the man, that's the Jasper, number 90, the linebacker, gets his hands on it, gets it up in the air, and it's intercepted. There you are right there, UCLA. That's the 40th takeaway. They lead the nation. And the second huge play for Goodwin in the last two games for the Bruins. He intercepted at the goal line to stop USC's bid to beat him and be here instead. Dropped the ball, reached for it, and when he reached for it, he went down on a knee, and the play was over. You got to wonder about Cook uh, if, uh, if missing a week because of the flu and then maybe coming out playing all right. Maybe he's getting a little bit tired and weak. I'm sure that's one thing that Terry Donahue and his crowd will keep an eye on. He's pretty sick. Bad snap. Yeah. And he did the smart thing because it was supposed to be a draw play. He just covered it up. Second down and 15. Give the ball to Hicks. Hicks is a burner. Pretty good gain on that play of about eight or nine yards. We'll be looking at third and about six. Smooth runner is Hicks. He's a skater. Both yeah. feet right down on the ground. There's a look at it from the other side. High number 50 is the linebacker. He's got it pretty well contained. Balls at the 32 UCLA yards. had a lot of running backs this year. In fact, they had five running backs that had more than 250 yards, but less than 500 yards in rushing. Out of the shotgun on third and six. Cook. That is incomplete. They're going to call it a fumble. They call it a fumble. And J.J. Stokes spinning around. Lost the ball, and they call it possession and fumble. Woo-wee. Good pass was complete to J.J. Stokes. After the reception, Stokes fumbled, and the Badgers recovered. Stokes with single coverage on Messenger, who just intercepted. Yeah, that's, he, he had he it. He caught it, turned around. Tried to put it away. Messenger was on him so quickly. Turned the ball over. That's three turnovers on the last three possessions by both teams. Somebody needs to stick a fork in that thing. It's walking around. It's on the 32-yard <laughs> line. Boy. I so think he, it's a good call. Yeah, oh, yeah. He put that ball on his arm. Yeah, yeah. 32-yard line, first down. Moss is back in there at the running back, the deep spot for Wisconsin. He's got the ball. And trailing the play, Jameer Miller, number 95, takes him down. 
Bud Moss still gets a good two yards on the carry, and Miller was there. Just pounced on him. Yeah, well, Miller is here. One of the reasons he's All-American, the play is going to start off over here. Now, watch him as he comes all the way around the block. Nobody even blocks him. They say, we don't need to block the end man because we're running away from him, and he won't catch it anyway. Well, Miller caught him. <laughs> That's why I said uh, UCLA would win most of the foot races. Yeah. Especially the defensive foot races. Yep. This is Moss again. Red Moss. That's Stop what I meant about being Basilio like. They just keep coming, keep coming right at you. 14 carries and 50 yards for Brent Moss for the ball game. We've got eight minutes to go in the first half. Seven ball to three. Wisconsin lead. Moss is averaging 135 yards per game. That's good enough for first in the Big Ten and third in the nation. Well, he'll be the second leading returner if he does come back next year to Wisconsin and says he is. Second leading returner in the nation. Yeah. Russian. Yeah. yeah. Blitz. Bevel's pass quickly thrown. Pass good. Caught by Keith Jackson. He's taken out of bounds inside the 20 at the 17. Teddy Lawrence got him out, and it's first down, Wisconsin. Impressed with uh, Daryl Bevel. The quarterback sees the blitz coming and gets rid of the ball. Watch Bevel as the linebackers are going to be blitzing. 23, not 26, that's Gallatin, number 26, makes a nice job. Ball goes right through his hand. That's what he did through the second half of the season in the Big Ten, and particularly against Michigan and Ohio State. There goes Moss. From the 17 to the 13 for a four-yard game. Coming up just in seven and a half minutes to go in the uh, first half. UCLA has a 27-yard field goal. Wisconsin drove it down and Moss scored. Four on the play. That's where we are. The second and six. Right now, Wisconsin's got a threat going. Second down and six coming up. The 13 yard line. Watch that 32. See, he's a man in motion. He gets in front of Moss. He goes outside. Moss goes inside. First and goal, Wisconsin. Ball is up to UCLA. One. The left guard, number 63, Joe Rudolph, really got out and got a nice block. Watch the left guard. That's 63. Watch the block, and he's going to lay right there. And then Moss just kind of stutters. There are no huge holes, but he knows that his offensive line are going to stay in the face of. There's a look at Rudolph. Going to stay in the face of the defensive men, and he has the quickness to squirt through. Miller left the field of play. He's had some groin trouble, had a groin pull, and was slowed up by it. But it's first and goal, Wisconsin. Moss cuts it outside. He is caught from behind. Goodwin, number 22, got a piece of him, and they're going to put him down after a short game. Again, a man comes from behind the ball carrier. And uh, makes the major Jay impact Lawrence on the stop. Goodwin, forcing him down. No gain on Second the down and goal Second from the one. Goal, balls the one. Moss again. Lost his footing. Lost a little bit of yardage, too. Lost a half a yard as he planted and tried to make his cut. Feet went out from under him. And I think if he doesn't slip, he probably would have scored. This field is in great shape, but I think it's a little damp, Keith. You can help me out here, boy. But if this, this were a golf course, it would be in magnificent shape. But yep. maybe they're just not wearing the cleats that are long enough to get in there. But this field is outstanding shape. I think it's just a little moist, a little damp, and that's why there's... Well, he had a funny step, though, Bob. Looked to me like he stepped on the side of his foot when he tried to plant it and uh, make his cut. Yeah. So we got a timeout with 5.13 to go in the first half. 
Here's a look at that last play. Watch him as Moss. This is a this is a player that's used to artificial turf. Watch his right foot right there. He's trying to cut, and his cleats aren't even on the surface. He's used to artificial turf. Played most of their games on artificial turf this year. Third and goal. Moss. I think he lost his footing again. He's he's right on the goal line, but no call yet. Now he gets it. Touchdown, Badgers. They run inside this time. I think he's actually going to hit one of the feet of his guard, uh, Rudolph. Right there, I think he stumbles over Rudolph. I don't know about that. His knee seemed to be down before the ball may have crossed the end line. He's entitled, however, to fall, isn't he? Yeah, but not, but not if his knee goes down first. Snetsky's extra point try is good. Moss has touched the ball on 20 of Wisconsin's 32 total plays. 5.04 to go in the first half. It is now Wisconsin 14 and UCLA 3. The offensive line, Rudolph 63, center Raymer making a nice block. Well, UCLA turns it over, and Wisconsin takes it to the bank and leads 14 to 3. Now let's spend a moment with Lynn Swan. Keith, Moss has been slipping. This field is a bit slippery. It's cut shorter than normal. But what they're going to do for Brent Moss is they're going to change the cleats on the shoes and put the longest possible cleat in. You've really got to plant and have your body weight balanced correctly on this field today to make a sharp cut. So if you don't do that and don't have the right shoes, you're going to see a lot more bodies falling down. And again, the Astro turf or the whatever that kind of turf is they play on makes it, it changes your habits. No question about it. No return. Derek Ayers decides two yards deep in the end zone. No, 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 no. Let's make sure we got the 20, and that's where they'll put it down first down. Ayers Johnson in the end zone for a touchback. About 2,000 of the people who came from Wisconsin uh, were here looking around, hoping they could get a ticket. That tent area there was made available to them to watch the ball game on an assortment of big, big screen television. You can see them all the way around there. And uh, they're sitting watching uh, some hundred of them or so, but uh, the 2,000 that they thought might want to come have not yet appeared. Ricky Davis and Darren Washington are in the backfield now for UCLA, and Wayne Cook throws underneath Darren Washington out of the backfield. We'll get it up across the 25 to about the 28-yard line. 14 to 3, Wisconsin is leading. Coming up this week, Olympic births at stake. ABC Sports presenting live primetime coverage of the Legs U.S. Figure Skating Championships beginning Thursday night. Brian Bortano looking for the gold in the men's finals. They're going to come back, and then Saturday night, our country's top women will be on the ice in the ladies' final. Special edition, ABC's Wide World of Sports, Thursday and next Saturday night. Cook hands the ball to Davis, and that's the first down. Ricky Davis carries. Put it out around the 32-yard line. Chris Hyde uh, made the stop for uh, Wisconsin. First down, Hello there. R.C. Slocum's uh, Aggies ain't rolled over yet, have they? Another team that has gotten very little respect, Texas A&M. Five yards on the play. The ball is spotted at the 33-yard line. First and 10, UCLA. First down, 32-yard line. Bruins, Skip Hicks, and James Miller are now in the backfield. From second man, Hicks. Oh, my goodness. He was uh, just a little bit of a trip. On the part of Lamarck Shackerford, the nose Shackerford. guard. Otherwise, he might have found that track and been gone. The ball out to the 35 -yard line. Because the man in the middle of the field had been suckered off to the right side a little bit, and with Hicks's speed, he might have been able to outrun it. Shackerford, the nose tackle, game. doing a nice job, Keith. Uh, he wasn't. He wasn't recruited. Wasn't highly recruited. Didn't everybody wanted him? Wisconsin said, "We'll take you." He got the last scholarship at uh, Barry Alvarez's first year. 
Cook throws a hummer and it is batted, uh, at least uh, tipped enough along the line of scrimmage it appears to lose its momentum and it falls incomplete. Could not get it to Stokes. Well, they had, what, about three weeks to do their recruiting when they were hired for the job. Jeff Messenger was and on the And to give you an idea of the element of luck, even in recruiting in sport today, 11 of those kids that, uh, uh, half of that class they recruited in that three-week period are starters here today in the program. you got to be lucky sometimes. Well, they, they bought into the program, the yep. Alvarez program, and those who stayed, they've, uh, they're, they're enjoying it. It's Shackerford. He's out of Gary, Indiana. He was unrecruited by everybody, unwanted. He received the last scholarship from the worst team in the Big Ten. Alvarez, his first year in 1990. Now the Bruins will have to punt it. Shager, Keith Jackson is waiting. They need a big one from Shaker. He's had a big season. He gets a big one. Jackson waits at the 28th, and he has taken down with some authority by number 39, Andy Colbert, the freshman cornerback. 43-yard punt, minus one on the return. Wavy lays halftime. John Saunders, Happy New Year. John will have scores and highlights. Put it on the 27, first down, Moss and Montgomery in the backfield. Wisconsin leading 14 to three. They've got the ball, Moss is outside. Red Moss, first down, 40 yard line, 41, 42 yard line. Red Moss finally brought down by Marvin Goodwin and Phil Greenwood. He got outside and laid a shoulder on Teddy Lawrence and got by him. Watch from the end zone as the offensive line, they're all just going to step to their right and try to get a reach block. You see them all stopping right and stopping right there. This man right here has the option to go through or go around to get him. That's just the offensive line. Now he can stop and go inside or he can keep going out and around. Once again, that is his 21st carry. He had 81 yards until that play. Now subtract one. Because he lost one. Rod Smalley, uh, on the tackle. Rod Smalley, nephew of Roy. Yeah, yeah, Remember Roy? Roy? Sliding at shortstop for the Cincinnati Reds. Sure do. Sure do. He's second and 11. Ball's at the 41 yard line. Second down, 11. Bit of hazy conditions. Beginning to drop into the Arroyo Seco. San Gabriel Mountain diminished somewhat in the distance. Doremus has not seen the ball today. The leading wideout receiver. Down the middle, he's under this one, and they knock him down. Penalty flag, first down, Wisconsin. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. Goodwin was the man who about fouled it. Play action pass when you get... The play action, to get the, the running game going, the play action comes after that. You fake the run, then you throw it. Goodwin, 22, was biting to, to stop the run up there to force, got uh, slowed up, and he got back there late, and it's a good call by the back judge. If you're allowed to face guard in college, then you should uh, turn your wide receivers into thespians, and that way they could grimace at the proper time and get a foul every time. Right? Uh -huh because they're watching your features and your eyes, they say, uh -huh. to know when the ball is coming yeah, close. We mentioned that Donahue's teams are the least penalized teams in the Pac-10. He has four today already. A couple of them were uh, interference calls, too. On first down. They go back to Moss one more time. He cuts it back into the traffic. Well, he's a tough guy. Got about seven yards on that carry. You cannot let Wisconsin gain six and seven yards on first down. They will beat you like a drum. Wisconsin, Wisconsin, same place. The Raymer is right here. Watch as he starts this way, and then he's going to try and block the, the middle linebacker. They all start to the left. This is the same play they ran to the right a little bit earlier. 
It's all straight blocking. It's it's it's, it's zone blocking. <laughs> you get a lot of a lot of people who have played with Scott just squawking and yelling about their. We talk hand, about their hands being and yeah. with a handful of jersey. You talk about jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Walk again. And that's another first down as he is at the 31 yard line. And it's first down with Wisconsin with a minute and 21 seconds to play in the first half. The, the point is the blocking, the plays that Wisconsin run aren't very different. They're just straight ahead, stretch to the sideline. If I see a gap, either Moss or Fletcher will jump up and get through it. Moss is out now. Fletcher is in. I mean, Brent's earned a breather. First and ten, Wisconsin at the UCLA Matt 31. Matt Nyquist checks into the ball game, replacing Michael Roan at tight end. Montgomery stays in. Terrell Fletcher now, the darter, is at tailback. Here's Nyquist, tight end. Play action, and they stop. Play was whistled dead. 55 seconds remaining in the first half. Procedure, I think. Dead ball. Ball start. Dead. Ball start. Ball start. Ball start. Ball start. Please return the clock for one minute, please. One minute. To look at the rushing comparison between the two teams. Wisconsin has rushed for 102 yards. UCLA only 42. Actually, that's a little low for Wisconsin, averaging less than four yards per carry. They put five seconds back on the clock to make it an even minute now on first down and 15. Bevel getting some pressure, gets his pass off. The pass is caught by J.C. Dawkins, and Dawkins is wrestled down inbound at the 30. Wisconsin's got one timeout remaining. Clock running at 40 seconds. They'd like to at least get out of here with three if they can. Second down and eight. Bevel looks and throws in the middle. Pass thrown to Matt Nyquist. And again, you've got a penalty flag and it's thrown by a linesman. Matt Nyquist uh, was the That's either uh, going to be false start by offense or offside defense. False start. Offense. Badgers had the ball over in the middle of the field on about the 27-yard line, but the penalty is going to hurt him here. Off there, off there, five yards. Five yards. 27 seconds remaining now. And they'll move the ball back to just about the 35. It's a big series for both teams. If Wisconsin could get more points on the board, it'd be tough for UCLA. UCLA has turned the ball over a couple times in the first half and allowed Wisconsin to get on top. They got one play, and then they're going to have to try the kick. Bevel throws it underneath. The Fletcher bounces off there. And Wisconsin's acting like they've still got it, and they do. And that stops the clock at three seconds. The ball is down around the 20. And Wisconsin's going to have a shot at a field goal. Who fumbled and then recovered his own fumble. So Fletcher was able to regain the ball as it came loose on this play. That's Bennett, Bennett number eight, the backup free safety. Oh, oh, UCLA, yeah, they're lucky, very lucky. UCLA actually teaches Time tripping the ball. That time it worked, but they didn't get it. He reached out and fetched it. Schnipsky with a 38-yard field goal try, his longest this year, 34. He talked him coaches into giving him a shot. They did. And he's become a dramatic personality on this Wisconsin football team. From 38 yards. Hooked it, missed it. Half is over. Wisconsin 14, UCLA 3. And the Bruins will have the ball to start the second half as Derek Ayers catches it deep in the end zone off the foot of John Hall. And UCLA will go to work first down out at the 20-yard line. 14-3, to three, the Bruins have something of a hill to climb. 
But they have the offense that goes with Hill climbing. UCLA has won their last eight bowl games, and Terry Donahue has been involved in every one of those, so, or the last five of those, I, no, the last eight. So I would think that Donahue would get this crew back going and uh, be competitive here in the second half. The clock is uh, messed up, so uh, we're going to have to try to figure it out. The clock has not moved. One shows 15-7, and the other shows 15 minutes. To look at the first half stats plays in favor of Wisconsin and at the bottom the time of possession big in favor of Wisconsin also the seven points off of a turnover go to Wisconsin go, 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 go. Darren Washington big run gets it out across the 35 yard line and it looks now as if UCLA might want to come out and try to knock Wisconsin off the line of scrimmage a bit well, this is a draw play. This is a type of finesse play. This is what UCLA does best. In their last five games, they've run 70 draw plays, and that's the type of thing they need to do. They are not a power team. They are a finesse team. That is the first carry, the first rush for the ball game by Darren Washington. Ah! Play action, took pass, thrown low and incomplete. Brian Adams couldn't come up with it. Fourth throw. Pass, no good. It was Had him open. Here are the leaders in the first half. Cook was 8 of 11 Defense and had the one interception. Hicks uh, led the, uh, the runners. Not a lot of running there. And Stokes was 7 for 95 yards. Really didn't do any damage, though. Stokes cut a lot of passes. Possessions, they did well their first two. They had 12 plays and a field goal. Then they had an 8. And then they didn't do anything with it after then with two turnovers. Second down and 10. Ball is at the 36-yard line of the Bruins. Ricky Davis is the tailback. Comes back to Cook. Cook checking off. Remember, he's had the flu, had a sore throat. That voice may be getting pretty sore right about here. Pressure. Side arms it. Pass caught by Stoke. They were giving Stokes a lot of room, and he's caught by Eric and Unverzak is shaken up after Derek making the tackle. Number 37 is also shaken up, Scott Nelson. There have been very few times when Wisconsin has double covered the All-American Stokes. There you see, he got Messenger turned around. He's wide open now. The, the plan is, if he catches it, just don't let him break anything big. And that's what you see there. A lot of red shirts around him, pulling him down. And it's a first down at the 46-yard line of Wisconsin. Here's Darren Washington. He's to the 35. And another UCLA first down. And so the Bruins come out of the clubhouse after the halftime break. Full of fury. UCLA's offense comes off of their passing game. They work in their draws and then their run. Wisconsin is just the opposite. Their pass game comes off of their running game. Their play action passes come after they get their run established. Game 11 on that run by Washington. Mike Wynn, number 81, will come to the bottom of the picture. He didn't call his name in the first half. Kevin Jordan's out with him. He's the speed burner. Little quick pop out here to Jordan, and Jordan isn't going anywhere with it because the play is made quickly by Kenny Gale. The corner on the boundary Kenny side. Kane. Short gain on the play. This Wisconsin secondary led the nation in interceptions, and Gale had four. And one of the reasons is they read the quarterback. He saw the, the short set of Cook, and he reacted, and that's why that ball was thrown back upfield, forced the receiver to come back for it. Second down and eight. 33-yard line of Wisconsin. Blitz. Cook gets it away, and it is incomplete off the hands of Wynn. Under the pressure, Cook threw it behind Mike, and he couldn't turn around and get it. I think Mike was the first Vietnamese to play football yeah. at the Division 1A level. Back of his jersey, that's, we're pronouncing that correctly, it's pronounced win. Doesn't look like it, but he's a uh, Vietnamese. He 
was on the last boat out of the uh, Macon Delta, burned in the Macon Delta, out, last boat out of Saigon before the VA Con came down. Cook has protection, throws a Hummer, complete, incomplete. He drilled Jordan with the ball, and I don't know, uh, Kevin obviously didn't catch it, but I'm not sure that he won't go home with a cross on his sternum because he really popped that thing in there. That's a play that could have been made, and Donahue needs somebody to step up and make a play. They're, they're, they're gaining yardage, but they're not getting any points. On fourth down, the Bruins are going fourth and eight. I think that's a smart play. I think, I think it's the time to go for it. Too long for a field goal, and you don't want to punt. They're out of the, out of the regular uh, set, out of the tee, as the quarterback's under center, and a single back. Cook has some time and throws, and it is incomplete. It was intended for Wynn, and you finally get a call from the back judge as Wynn was being covered by Donnie Brady, and I think this may prove to be a very good call. I think it's a good call, too. I think the defensive man, well, we'll take a look at it and see. He had a handful of shirts. The left hand right there is turning the receiver. It's a, it's a key down. It's a turnover down. If that call doesn't make, he gets the ball. That's why Barry's so upset. But Gales had his uh, left hand on the defensive, I mean, on the offensive man, turning him around. These are big eight officials. The referee is John Laurie. The ball is moved to the 23-yard line now, where it'll be a first down for UCLA. So it is a big play. And a moment here with Lynn Swan. Keith, you were concerned about Cook and what, how his, what his condition is. It's fine. At halftime, he was involved in all the meetings. He was up talking. He took no medication, showed no signs of having any problems with his voice coming back into the second half. And that's a remarkable recovery. They did, however, uh, say something to the effect that uh, he had been taking some medicine for his, the flu that was a derivative of some steroids. <laughs> he had to take a test. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't play in the Olympics, could he? We don't know where we are on time because uh, the clock down at one end of the stadium is, uh, isn't showing anything to speak of, a bunch of numbers. The one at the other end shows 13-3-2. So both clocks, I think, are out of whack, and the time is being kept on the field. That'll be the back judge's job. So when they blow the whistle and run the teams off the field, we'll know the game's over, won't we? Time out on the officials while they work out an apparent problem on the timing. 23-yard line of Wisconsin. Big defensive penalty called against the Badgers. And it's first down UCLA with 13, or approximately 13 minutes to play in the third quarter. 14 to three, the Badgers are leading. They haven't been here since 1963. And they've never won. They've been here three times and have never won a Rose Bowl game. I think we're going to play football now as uh, John Lowry rolls it and the Bruins come to the line of scrimmage on the first down play. Bruins first down as a result of a Set up Davis and Washington in the backfield for the Bruins with Davis the deep man. Give it to Davis, bouncing outside. And number 47, Unverzak, chases him. Take a look from behind the defense. 85 is Jurowitz. That's Parker blocking on him. 47 is the inside linebacker, Unverzot. And Brady, 23, gets a piece of it. Gain on the play is about two yards. Uh, yeah, more than that. It's about uh, seven yards. And second down and three coming up. James Miller now is in the backfield for the Bruins. He's number 36. Ricky Davis is number 31. 
Here they come. Jump back. Blitz is on. Pass to the corner. Incomplete. Intended for Stokes. 6 4 against 6 2. Donnie Brady. You never have a better opportunity than this one. Watch the linebackers. All three of them are going to blitz. That leaves Stokes out here on the outside. One on one. Bottom of your screen. Stokes got 17 touchdowns on the year. Big height advantage. Brady Man. pushes him out of bounds. Caught that ball. Yeah, should have had that one. He's made a lot more uh, simpler catches than that one during the year. Third down and three. They go to the shotgun. Cook goes underneath for the first down. First and goal. UCLA down around the Wisconsin eight-yard line. And Brian Allen, the tight end, pulls it in. Remember those days about six, seven years ago, Bob, uh, when UCLA had that whole flock of great tight ends? They yep. had a bunch. They had a bunch of them come through. Charles Arbuckle and... Uh, yeah, those guys. Yeah. At the eight-yard line, first and goal, Bruins. Wisconsin ball, first down, their own 12. It's Terrell Fletcher and Jeff Worth in the backfield now, with the deep man being Fletcher. He's got it. Get him hold of him or you won't get him. Only one man, number two, Teddy Lawrence, prevents the touchdown. Up front, but watch the pullback over here, Montgomery. He's going to come and trap one of the defensive men right here. Going to be a huge hole to right side. Watch Montgomery right there. He traps the outside linebacker. There is a crease, and Fletcher gets through it. Lawrence was the last bastion, and he got it. And it's first down, Wisconsin. The ball is up on the 45-yard line. Fletcher again. Say one thing about the way Wisconsin runs the ball. A guy just has just burned up his shoes with a run. Yeah, he ain't getting no time <laughs> to take a deep breath. Get up there, boy, and run again. Basic stuff. First half, offensive leaders Bevel, 8 of 12, and one interception. Boss had 93 yards, and Dawkins led the receivers with 27 yards on three receptions. The possessions, they had six possessions. They scored on their second and their fifth, and then they missed that field goal just before halftime. Good field position on two of those possessions in UCLA territory. Mark Montgomery checks back into the lineup now for the Badgers. Give it to Fletcher. Oh, he's got a convoy. It's first down at the 36-yard line of UCLA, and here's 20. Keith Alvarez told me at halftime he thought his defense started slow, but of course in the second half they picked that up to be more aggressive. He says the offense is facing a lot of nine-man crunch and they're getting a lot of backside pressure. He says he may send someone in motion, but they're looking to stop that backside pursuit of the UCLA Bruins. Well, so far they've done it, I would say. Well, that play was just too easy. That, there was yeah. a fullback. Montgomery was out there. had nobody to block. Put it on the 37-yard line. And Fletcher's hot. Give it up to Montgomery. And Big Mark gets a carry. Look, here, I got a ball level to run hard. And he picks up four. And we get some pushing and shoving. We don't 
need this nonsense, guys. Now behave yourself. Junior Miller made the stop. There's a penalty on the play. You got penalty flags. We're waiting for the call on it. Against UCLA. That flag's been pretty heavy on the Bruins today. Monday night, ABC Sports will be seen from San Francisco as the West NFC West champions, 49ers, will be meeting the Philadelphia Eagles in the season finale of ABC's Monday Night Football. It'll be at 9 Eastern and 6 Pacific here on ABC Sports. So it's a big call against the Bruins and moves Wisconsin on down the field. 15 yard penalty on the ball. Oh, yeah. There's your call. Josiah, number 55. Yeah. Moves the ball down to the. UCLA is uh, in big trouble if Wisconsin line. converts this turnover into a touchdown. As you see Josiah on the sideline. First and 10 managers. Well, you saw Littleton grab a hold of him and get him out of there as quickly as possible. It's first down. The ball is at the 19. Fletcher comes back. Picked up by Wisconsin. Rudolph knocked right up, and big Joe Rudolph just wrapped it up. So all the Fletcher breaks right now are going the way of the Badgers. Joe Rudolph for the Badgers. The Bruins have this one defense pretty well. He tries to cut back. Edwards 23 is there. The ball comes out. And Rudolph is there for Wisconsin. Brett Moss, the tough guy, is Second back in now. Ball, the battering ram line. checks in. Fletcher did a good job getting them to this point. Here goes Moss into the stack. And I want to tell you something. There was some folk laying some leather on number 22. Marvin Goodwin comes up out of the secondary and puts his hat right on Brent Moss and turned him. Goodwin leads this team in tackles. And he also leads him in interceptions with seven. He had one earlier in the ball game today. Ball is just short of the 10-yard line where it is third down and a long one. Moss is out on Terrell Fletcher now. Having caught his breath, is back in. I think Bevel wound up with the ball rolling around on the ground with it. Bevel fumbled the snap, but it never came up. The play. They burned the clock. A snap never came up. Didn't look like. The way of the game. Offense, the flag was thrown before the play yeah. even started because yeah. of the delay. Didn't get the ball snapped in time. There you see the clock. The quarterbacks, the, these clocks are located in, in really in a pretty good uh, position for the quarterbacks, right behind the goalpost. The right there, the there as the quarterback the breaks the huddle, he looks right through the goalpost and can see how much time he has left to get the ball snapped. <laughs> They're five out of seven, Wisconsin is, on third down conversions today. That was a big, big penalty there. Bevel's got a man. He's late getting it away, but it is caught by Dawkins. And Dawkins goes hunting for the marker, and I don't know if he got there or not. Bevel was late getting in the ball. I mean, he was wide open for some time. Down around the nine-yard line. Dawkins is out here. The inside receiver is going to come down. The defensive back is going to get tied up as Dawkins comes in and then goes back to the outside. There is a blitz on. There's single coverage in the secondary. He's wide open. The ball is thrown a little bit further upfield. If it had been on target, he could have caught it and got in for the first down. It is fourth and a good yard. Yeah. 
Fletcher's out, Moss is in, and Wisconsin's going for it. Fourth and one. Instead of going for the three, they're going to go for the bundle. Big play in this ball game. Moss dives. I don't think he made it. He did not make it. Penalty flag. Now that could change everything. Oh, my God. We're going to throw somebody out of the ball game pretty soon here. Too much of this. Too much of it. It's a bunch of nonsense. You can't have it. If you can't control it, let's just quit playing the damn game. It's ridiculous. Well, we saw it down in Georgia. We've seen it all over the country this year. Everybody wanting to fight about everything. I'll say it again. We saw it in uh, in Colorado with Miami. If they're going to fight, if they if kick them out of a ball game and suspend them for the next week, and if these kids know they're going to be suspended and get kicked out of the ball game, just like in hockey, just like in college basketball, if you uh, kick uh, kicked out of a ball game, you sit out the next one. Put you, some teeth into it. This is not. I have no interest in participating in a sport that is going to be behaving like this. I mean, it's just disgraceful. There's no sense in it. I don't care if you're college, if you're high school, or if you're professional, and particularly the professionals shouldn't be out there fighting the kind of money they're being paid. Now these guys have got to make a hard decision here because the people they boot from this ball game could be the decision of the game. And they may not get everybody. If you're going to start kicking players out, they may not have seen all of the perpetrators, but... He told Donahue, and now he's going to go over and tell Alvarez. Perry was wanting to know, what about penalties? It was a fourth down and one. It looked like he came up short. I don't think he made it, no. He's down right there, and he has not reached the marker. I don't know what caused the fight. That's good one, 22, going after DeRamus. That's Raymer, 52, trying to break it up. But it looked like DeRamus and Goodwin 20. Keith, the official, the uh, coaches on the Wisconsin side are really yelling at the officials not so much about penalties, but the fact that they felt that UCLA charged offsides on that last, on that fourth down play. And the official did not make the call. Well, I thought he was offside also. I thought the end man on the line at, at this side was way offside. Have they booted anybody out of the ball game, Lynn? Can you tell? Keith, as far as I can tell right now, they have not ejected anyone. The official came over and talked to Barry Alvarez. I'm on the Wisconsin sideline, and no one was removed from the game. But I also have to say that Wisconsin, Barry Alvarez did a great job of keeping his team off the field during that melee. Look at look at 23 on UCLA. The man on the He's end of the line. Clearly offside. Well, I don't. You can hold on. It's close. Well, it's close. Yeah. He may have timed it. He may have timed it. We don't have a shot right down the line. No, there's a, both teams, two players, each team ejected. Who? Well, I would guess, you know the two I would guess, are the two that started well, it that Goodwin's we had. Well, Goodwin's got to be one of them. Yeah. Goodwin and DeRamond. Yeah, those two. There's Goodwin for UCLA. He's gone, we know that. Yeah, he's Raymond's a second-team All-American. As I said, he's their leading tackler. And their leading interceptor as UCLA takes over on down. And Cook rolls out, getting pursuit. And runs the ball all the way out to the 17-yard line. So that's a pickup of about seven yards. But 
Maybe you have the right idea, Bob. I don't know ejecting them and uh, and uh, making them sit out one game is enough to keep. Well, but something has got to be done to stop it. Otherwise, we have to stop fooling with them. But these players know that if they get in a fight or if they leave the bench to go to the field, that if they get kicked out, they're going to miss the next game. And in football, it's even more so because there's only 11 games. Basketball, you have, what, 28 games? Bruins, Second down and game. three for the Bruins. Cook hands the ball to Ricky Davis. Davis brings it out of the pack. And Ricky has a first down up at the 27-yard line. Jeff Messenger brought Davis down. UCLA first down. A little draw play, a little misdirection. The line Both the linemen from that side, Ogden and Novitsky, pull. We mentioned that they run a lot of draw plays, a lot of misdirection plays. Cook to a shotgun on first down. Reggie Holt is out, and Jamel Brown is in replacing him at a strong safety position. And that pass is incomplete. Darren Washington had gone down on a knee, then realized he couldn't make the catch that way, and he started to stand up the ball around. Good pass, incomplete. It was intended It'll be second down Washington. and ten with seven minutes and 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. Wayne Cook does not look himself, Keith. And no. For those who may have just joined us, he was out, uh, missed practice for a week with some flu, really practiced sick. the last three days. Uh, he is, when he does complete the passes, they are not on target. They're short, they're high, they're low. He ran Second that ball out of bounds a little earlier. He just not, does not look himself. 28-yard line, first, uh, second down and 10 for UCLA with Wisconsin leading 14 to 3. That's a flag. Kevin Jordan was grabbed by Donnie Brady and spun around as the ball passed him. Question here was it catchable? Yeah, certainly not question. catchable if it's got, yeah. got your arm. It's the second <laughs> one of those on Brady. First down. The 15 yard penalty and a first down. That's been a first penalty against the Bruins. The first down. First and ten at their own 33. Five-yard penalty in the first half. That is five yards. 14-3 is your score as Cook rolls it out, running for the second time now here in the third quarter. Pick up of about three, one of the world's most enduring symbols, the Goodyear Blimp Eagle, based in Carson, California, offering these aerial pictures today for our ABC Sports coverage. The Goodyear Blimps have been flying over major sporting events since 1925. They have certainly been here many times. The football rests up on the 38th. Where it is second down and five. Cook throws, it's blocked into the air and falls incomplete. Here's Lynn Swan. Keith, after the fight on the field, the officials ejected two players, one from Wisconsin, one from UCLA. From Wisconsin, Mark Montgomery, the fullback. For UCLA, it's Marvin Goodwin, the free safety. I thought they had said two from each side, but it's only one from each side. Yeah, Montgomery is the starting fullback and a vital blocker in that running scheme. And, of course, Goodwin, they all packed him, strong safety, and second-team All-American. Third down and five. Pressure coming, passes away to Stokes. Question is... Did he have enough for the first down? And the man coming from the side, the market, the linesman, has given him a very good mark, and it will be a UCLA first down. Kenny Gale did just about all he could do. Well, that's the ninth reception for Stokes. Gales has done a pretty nice job, although you've caught a lot of balls. Stokes has not broken any big ones, and that's what he has done all year long. 44-yard line for this first down snap. And Skip Hicks checks into the backfield. The speedster, 6'1", 205. 
They burn the clock. It'll cost them five. It'll be first and 15. Both coaches have had uh, their moments to be frustrated today. And these are two very well-prepared coaches. And exceptional staffs, I think. Well, they are. Donahue and his staff. Uh, Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator, an outstanding, one of the top assistants in the country. And Bob Field, his defensive coordinator, both top people. Hicks has got it. down over there the wide receiver but number 81 got in enough there's enough presence there to get in the way of two different would-be tacklers stayed with the defensive back on that side to give Hicks about an additional seven or eight yards it'll be second down and two all is now on the Wisconsin side of the field 14 to 3 the Badgers lead Hicks has the first down. Works his Dicks way to the 45, carries. and they'll move the chain. Chris Hyde on the tackle for Wisconsin. You've got the clock showing 518 in the third quarter. If the Bruins can get it in the end zone, you've got a ball game. They were down there, ran 11 plays to start the second half, got down inside the 10 on the first and goal of the eight, turned it over. Wisconsin came back, and they couldn't get anything out of it. They had a big fight. This is it. So Washington, Washington, number 30. And he picks up about eight yards on the first down carry. Coming up next here on ABC Sports, the Mountaineers of Don Nealon say we are still in the national championship hunt. Thank you. They take on the Florida Gators, the SEC champions in the USF&G Insurance Sugar Bowl. That'll come right after the Rose Bowl game here on ABC Sports. That's not a gimme for West Virginia either because Florida only lost two games to number two ranked Florida State and also to Auburn, both teams in the top four in the country. Florida's favorite, aren't they? I think so. Yeah, a little bit. This is Hicks. And Hicks slides on around the corner and picks up another first down before Jet Messenger. They bring him down. Now, UCLA is at the Wisconsin 33-yard line. Reggie Hope, number 10, the regular at strong safety, is still not out on the field. Brown is there in his place. Here they come again. Cook. Loses the ball. Bruins have turned it over again. Four turnovers. That's the fourth turnover in the last seven possessions. You just can't miss a week of practice and be sick like Cook has been and be your normal self. Sure, there were people around him, but in other times, he would have done something else. UCLA is hurting because of uh, Cook. Were ejected from this ball game. From Wisconsin, it was Lee DeRamus, a starting wide receiver, and also Gallatin from UCLA. That means that UCLA's first and second team safeties are out of the ball game. Yeah, both three safeties were gone. I thought that John Laurie had said two from each team, and we had DeRamus involved with it from the very beginning. So he, he's out of there, and uh, both three safeties now, Goodwin and Gallatin, are gone for UCLA. And Gallatin has been uh, one of their prime blitzers. He's made some huge plays for them late in the season. This is Terrell Fletcher carrying the ball for Wisconsin. They take over first down at their own 37-yard line. 
And there wasn't much gain on that play. 3.25 to play in the third quarter, and the Badgers lead 14 to 3. UCLA came in the number one team in turnover margin, but look what they have done today. They've given it away four times and only taken it once. The game story for UCLA was, was create and uh, do something with when they get the turnovers, and they have not done that here this afternoon. Second down and 10. Incomplete as intended for Vince Zullo. Bevel's pass was incomplete. Broken. Zullo doesn't get in very often. Uh, Barry Alvarez usually normally uses him as a blocker. He is the guy that goes down on kicks, the headhunter down on kicks, and put him in the offense when they need him to block from the flanker position. But with Duramus out, he is getting an opportunity to play. Uh, Brunston must be gimpy, too. Yvonne Brunston. Ramos will not play anymore. He's been ejected. Third down. Bevel's pass is incomplete over the head of Michael London. Michael London caught the very first pass of the ball game, and this is the second time the ball has been thrown toward him. So it's three and out for Wisconsin. The UCLA side of the Rose Bowl now waves the gold and blue and says, let's go, Bruin. 2.47 remaining in the third quarter. And back is Paul Gidry awaiting the punt of Sam Veith. Veith's uh, father played in the Rose Bowl. He played for Iowa back uh, a few years back. Absolutely no pressure on him. He just nails it. Gidry's back at the 18. Steps away from the first wave of tacklers. And we'll get it up to about Gidry the 20 yard line. 44 yard punt. Two yard return. But you're probably going to add something to it because of the penalty. Mike Rohn was down to make the tackle. Block in the back. Illegal block. You illegal use of the hands. And so that'll back the Bruins up some more. There have been a lot of yellow flags thrown at them today. 25 yards on the kick by Sam White. Penalties on the Bruins. On return. First down. First down. A, lot of, a lot of talking going on on the sidelines. 11 plays each drive. Hit it in a fumble both times. Ball is on the 11-yard line as UCLA snaps it on first down. Cook rolling out under pressure. Delivers the ball to Darren Washington, and Darren Washington is tackled just as the ball arrives by number 98, Yusef Burgess. Burgess was the leading tackler on the ball club this past season. 92 is Fowler. He's being blocked by Parker. Jurowitz now, 85, is going to put pressure second down and nine they gained the a yard on the play this is Ricky Davis running alone I mean he got a field block on the right hand side and there was nobody filling the hole and he runs it out for a first down at the 30 well, he's running behind Parker the three-time All-Pac-10 player, number 68. On that run by Ricky Davis. UCLA came into this game averaging 32 points a game. They have three through almost three quarters of play. And shaken up on the play is Donnie Brady. Wow. That'll make you timid going to the cereal bowl. 18-yard <laughs> gain on the play. First down, UCLA at the 30-yard line with a minute and 50 to play in the third quarter. Wisconsin still leading 14-3. to three. That's where we were at halftime. Cook has all day 
to deliver the ball to the running back, Davis. And he looked at the 35, so it'll be second down and five. Lights are on now as we head toward dusk at 4.25 or so in, on a western afternoon. New Year's Day, 1994. Again has all day. Puts it high. Down the field. Now passes. Intercepted. No, there's look, a penalty flag, no. and that interception won't stand. Defensive back knocked him off on that side as he went by him. And I think it was Gales who, who was beat and just reached out and knocked him off stride. It's a um, messenger is 29. See a little stop and go. Now he's going to have him beat. And right there, Messenger says he's going to beat me. I better just jam him. I'd rather get called for that than give up a touchdown. Nelson comes over and intercepts it, but the flag has been called on Messenger. Defensive pass interference. 15 yards. First down. And when you get right down to it, it's a smart play by Messenger. Sure. Rather than giving up a touchdown, you only give up 15 yards. 15 yards penalty on Wisconsin. Puts the ball at the 50-yard line. First down, Bruins. Ball is just short of midfield now. And first down, UCLA with 50 seconds and the clock running. Remaining to play in the third period. Hand it off to James Milliner. That's an eight-yard gain. James Milliner on the delay. And so the Bruins now start to move the ball. Jeff Messenger made the tackle. Again, it's on a draw type of play, which is something that you come off your passing game with. And that's UCLA. Their athletes the in the run. offensive the line, very good athletes, have very good feet. Balls at the back good at draw plays, line. good at pass blocking. Reggie Holt has gone back to the field now for Wisconsin at strong safety. He's been out trying to work out the problems with a slightly pulled hamstring. He's back out there. They need him. Here comes Hicks. It's another first down. Skip as Skip Hicks goes up the middle to the Wisconsin 26-yard line at the end of the third quarter. And we'll be back with more from the Rose Bowl after this message and the word from our ABC station. We go to the final quarter of this 80th Rose Bowl game. UCLA first down at the Wisconsin 26-yard line. They had a frustrating third quarter. 13 first downs, 161 yards, and no points. Wayne Cook back to throw. Looks for Jordan. Throws! And it is a penalty flag trailing the incomplete forward pass as J.J. Stokes lay it out, got his hands on it, and couldn't hold it. The scoreboard clocks are not functioning once again, so the time... It's holding on the defense. This may be where the holding is, too, as Stokes is going to go around Holt. Hey, he holds him. I think that's a classic case of holding, and it may have slowed him up just enough because he just misses catching this ball. That was close to being a touchdown. Holtz is the man, the strong safety, who has had the hamstring problem back in the ballgame. Ricky Davis is back in the lineup now as they stay in the shotgun. Box are all screwed up again and not working. Ball is given to Milliner. Milliner running to the right side will get about four before he tumbles down and comes away with a lump of sod in his hat. The stats through three quarters, pretty much the same everywhere, but the big thing that jumps out, the turnovers. UCLA with four, and uh, points, opponents' points gave seven points off of one of those turnovers to Wisconsin. The time of possession about the same. Second down and six. This is Davis. He's outside. He's in the end zone. Touchdown.
J.J. Stokes through the springing block. Ball starts out to the left. He bounces it, but Keith, a good point. Watch from the right side, right there at Stokes, the wide receiver, helps Davis into the end zone. Merton for the point. It is a 14 to 10 ball game. Wisconsin still leading in the final quarter. See, until they scored that last touchdown, four of the seven possessions that they had had in this ball game ended with a turnover. Now Merton will kick off, and Keith Jackson and Terrell Fletcher will wait for it. And we'll see what the Badgers can do. It may be gut check time right here. It's Jackson at the four. Good return to the 32. Return of 28 yards. Now remember, Montgomery was ejected after the fight. DeRamus has been ejected from the fight. That's their starting fullback and their best wide receiver. And Montgomery is so vital because of his blocking ability. It was a dynamic block. And he is kicked out of the last college football game he'll be playing in. He's a senior. There's a look at DeRamus. He'll be back. He's just a junior. He was their long-range threat. They had controlled him, but nonetheless, the threat was still there. Now, without Montgomery, can the Badgers make the running game go against the fired-up UCLA team now that seemingly has found some momentum? Well, we may very well be watching a turnaround here. This man, Bevel, is going to have to step up and make a play or two, I think. Well, he's capable. They've used Dawkins in the passing game quite well today, but he hasn't seen the ball much here in the second half. This is Moss again. So in two runs, they've moved it from the 32 to the 37, where it is third down and five. Terry Donahue has never lost a Rose Bowl game in which he has coached. He is 3-0. In fact, he has never lost a Rose Bowl game in which he's been a part of. He was 5-0 overall. He played in one and was an assistant coach in one. So he's 5-0 lifetime in Rose Bowl games. Complete the pass bounces off Jeff Worth in the ball game at fullback. He wasn't going anywhere anyway. Well, he did Worth, not have the first Worth is in there because of the ejection to Montgomery. Montgomery, not only a great blocker, was he, but he caught 27 passes coming into the game today. Well, we've got just over 13 minutes to play. The clocks are askew. So we're having to get the time for you from the field. We'll try to keep you posted. Gibbry is deep for the punt from Sam Bite. 44, 43, 44 on his previous three. So Sam's done his job today, but he didn't get a whole lot of that one. And it takes a favorable roll for the Badgers and rolls dead down around the 22 yard line. A 41 yard punt with no return. All right, Brent, thanks very much. That's might be a pretty good little ball game down there in Yellens tonight, too, you know. Don Nealon and his uh, West Virginia team had an outstanding season. Kind of interesting. Don Nealon was the other man in the planning when Donald Shalila and hired Pat Richter, and they started searching around. You mean if Barry Alvarez wouldn't have been here, yep, Nealon may have been. May have. May yeah. have. And there, he was uh, Richter's next, next choice. This is Ricky Davis. And Davis is fumble. not fumbled. The ball was Thompson dives on it, and the Badgers have it. The Bruins have turned it over five times. The 30th play of the half. UCLA coughs it up, 
And Mike Thompson covered it for the Badgers. Oh, my goodness. Davis, who scored the touchdown behind Nowitzki, number 71. Gets a little careless with the ball right there. It comes out. And UCLA, had, who had been taking it away all season, is now giving it up. This is the third turnover in four possessions in the second half. We've got 12-15 to play in the ball game, and here is a golden opportunity for Wisconsin. Penalty flag as Moss runs into the stack and doesn't go anywhere. I don't think four points is enough for the Badgers to win this ball game. I'll be surprised if it is. And let's see about the penalty. Offside, Bruins hurting themselves again. It'll be first and five after the penalty's marked off. Bruins have four sacks, lost four fumbles, have one interception. They have eight penalties, totaling 90 yards. And the sun's going down over the Pacific. That's the rabbit going over the hill, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> one pretty. First and five. Devil lets it go deep. Look out. Incomplete pass intended for Michael London. He was double covered. And he couldn't make the turn back into the ball. That was the rabbit after them. Daryl Bevel, we mentioned earlier, five days from now, will celebrate his 24th birthday. You know, he is two years older than Dean Bledsoe, who was the number one draft choice out of Washington State and has played, Drew Bledsoe, excuse me, that has played so well up in New England. That just tells you a little bit about the uh, experience of this young man. Moss, look out, he got it. And he's got a first down. So Brent Moss, again, showing his dogged tenacity that drives him. Bangs away until he comes out of there with a first down at the UCLA 23-yard line. 28 carries, 107 yards for Brent Moss. 11th consecutive 100-yard game this season. Moss again. He's whipsawed after a couple of yards. Jameer Miller Stop was the first Jameer man to Miller. get to him. Clock winds down under 12 minutes left to play. The clocks are down. The time is being kept. We've got one clock running now at 11.20. That might be close to being right. There were three different people walking around on the sidelines down there with hand timing the ball game. For UCLA defense now Ball blitzing almost one. on every play. They have to. Bevel runs away from pressure. Got loose. A lot of green in front of him. It cut down. Bevel makes the big play for the Badgers. kind of big play Daryl Bevel running for a touchdown when you put your linebackers you go man to man in the secondary everybody is scrambling around covering somebody and there's nobody to cover the quarterback gets a little help there Kick is good. That is the second longest Wisconsin play of the day. Daryl Bevel, 21-yard run for a touchdown. And it's 21-10, to 10, Wisconsin. And he were near 21 yards all year long. In fact, his longest play is zero. Otherwise, it's minus in rushing the ball. But he just went 21 yards. 
for a touchdown that makes it a 21 to 10 ball game. And he is the first Wisconsin quarterback named all Big Ten since Ron Vanderkellen in 1962. Here's the kickoff. Ayers. And Derek Ayers. Brings John Hall's kick back up across the 20 to about the 23. Take another look. Back to pass. Gets pressured. Scrambles. Has the ability to elude the defensive guy. Now looks like he's going to take a dive right here, but then no. The defensive backs for UCLA thought he was going to go down and was really surprised. Bevel on the run. Well, he spoiled him for next year. Out of the shotgun from the 23-yard line, Wayne Cook swings one out, and there's a solid collision as Darren Washington is taken down by Kenny Gale. And he may have lost a yard. The clock, we're told, is now correct at 10 minutes and 25 seconds to play in the football game. Wisconsin 21 to 10 over UCLA. There's plenty of time, but UCLA just has to stop turning the ball over. They run out of feet to shoot. Took back. Yes, time. He's still, he's going to try to run. And that's a mistake. They lose again as Cook is taken down on the fifth sack of the day at the 20, just over the 20-yard line. Remember, this man was sick Monday and Tuesday. He was thrashing around in bed with a high fever. Wednesday and Thursday came out to practice, and Homer Smith had to do all the huck hunting. Yeah, well. And there's no question that he's not himself. But the reason they don't go to somebody else is there is a big gap between Cook and the next guy in. Third down and 12. Passes away. The pass is good. Caught by Jordan. Kevin Jordan is down at the 40. First down, Bruin. Cook had enough time. He kept searching, and Jordan finally broke free. Yeah, this is a nice play by Jordan, too, because... There weren't many people open, and he had to wait a long time. The protection was there, and he picked up a big first down. The key thing about this is the amount of time that it takes. He's going back seven steps. He's waiting, waiting, waiting. And he threw it over the linebacker, Cass Cadden, and into the receiver, Jordan, for a first down. Jordan again. Fumbles the ball. Badgers have it. I think penalty flag. Or you even make a motion like you're going to joust somebody and you're going to get flagged now. Well, let's see. Terry Donahue cannot believe what's happening to his offense. It could be just the Badgers knocking the ball loose. I think it's Wisconsin ball. I don't know about the penalty, but if it is, that'll be six turnovers by the Bruins. Scott Nelson looked to me like uh, having had recovered it. Shackerford agrees with the call. Personal foul. Wisconsin, interception, okay. First down. Well, it wasn't an interception, it no. was a fumble. fumble. Yeah. Go back and take a look. Jordan's coming from the right side. You've got to put the ball away when you get in traffic. You got to protect the ball. That's a nice play. Who was that? That's uh, 85. Jurowitz, I think. No. Who is it? Burgess, Burgess. 98. Joseph Burgess. Does a nice job of knocking that ball loose. Ball is back on the 36 yard line for the Badgers now. First down and 10. Brent Moss. 36. Nothing there. Maybe a yard, yard and a half. Not much. Keith, there were five Wisconsin Badgers that led the conference, the Big Ten Conference, in individual stats, like Bevel led in passing, 
Moss led in rushing, and Burgess led the Big Ten in fumbles caused. He had five during the season, so this is not something that he doesn't try to do, and that was a smart heads-up play by Burgess. Second down and eight. Moss up the middle. First down. He crosses midfield and goes to the UCLA 45. And Travis Collier makes the tackle. The Goodyear blimp logging over 100,000 miles every year, covering major sporting events. Our cameraman up there providing these pictures is Glenn Hampton. Very graceful way to take a ride. Hi, guys. Happy New Year up there. Hey, Glenn, the growth is getting pretty lush, isn't it? <laughs> Contact along the line of scrimmage. Five fumbles lost is a Rose Bowl record. That's one. Dead ball. Dead ball. Dead ball. Dead ball. Up in. Up in. Five yard penalty. First down. UCLA has six turnovers in the game, Keith, in this one game. They only had 20 turnovers in 11 games wow. all season long. Yeah. Like the man said, that's why you play it. You never know. Seven and a half minutes to go. 21 to 10, Wisconsin lead. First down and 15 for the Magic. Bevel still got it. Let's it go. Dawkins can't hold it. Just off his hand. Ball was thrown too high. He really didn't have a shot at it. Here's Lynn Swan. Keith, Wisconsin had a windfall this year with marketing. Their great season increased it by 30%. But more than that, they sold 50,000 hats, their Big Ten co-championship hats. And if the, ho if the score holds today, I think they're going to sell about another 50,000 of that one. You know what they're getting for them? 25, 27 bucks, somebody told me. Whew. I wonder, maybe I'll, I'll go steal Pat. Second down. Here they come. Oh. Brent Moss was not ready to catch the ball. He's not a natural receiver. He was trying to turn back into it. The ball was thrown behind him, and he just simply had wobbled all over the place. I'm impressed with Bevel, though, uh, Keith. I don't know if he's been sacked yet today, but he is uh, in the eye. He has not been sacked. He has seen the blitz come, and he has gotten rid of the football. UCLA, coming into the ball game, had uh, 48 sacks on the year. That's second best in the Pac-10. They have not gotten to Bevel all day. Darrell Fletcher is in the lineup now, a tailback. It is third down and 15. Passes away. Passes good to London. And London is well, well short of the first down. But at least he's got it back over there on the UCLA side of the field. And uh, Sam Vite ought to be able to get it down there somewhere near Coffin Corner. This Wisconsin team's going to be around for a while, too, uh, Keith. With yep. Bevel, just a sophomore, the two running backs, Moss. Yeah, and but next year, Fletcher. next year, Bob, yeah. at Colorado. I know what you're at saying. At Michigan. I know. At Ohio State. I know. At Michigan State. I know. Holy cow, you need four platoons of Marines to and do that. And they're not going to sneak up on anybody next year. No, they're not. Oh, he shanked it. He shanked it. He gets a very lucky roll, though. Look at that. Just when you thought the devil had him with the coattail, an angel flew by, and it's dead on the 10-yard line. <laughs> Here's what we're talking about. Badgers next year, they have to go to Colorado. They go at Michigan State. Then they go at Michigan and Ohio State back-to-back. -back. So, um, but next year, they're going to have the confidence. Nine of the 11 offensive starters are back next year, including the two running backs, Moss and Fletcher, and Bevel, the quarterback. All right, the Bruins starting deep. There's a record we told you about. At the 10-yard line, first down for the Bruins. Three yards away play. from getting back in the hunt. At six and a half minutes to play in the game, Wayne Cook throws, and it's incomplete. 
Stokes, the intended receiver. At this moment, five seconds here for our ABC stations to say Happy New Year to you. Scott Nelson covering for Wisconsin. Dusk settling over Pasadena, Arroyo Seco, the Rose Bowl. The 80th flag. They've had 105 Tournament of Roses. They didn't always play football. Under the Darren Washington was looking to see where I can go and never caught it. Kenny Gales was looming on his immediate horizon. Gales has been a very active young man this afternoon. He certainly has. And I would although, like to go out there and cover J.J. Stokes. I would not like that. <laughs> although J.J. Stokes has caught a bunch of balls today, he has still, he's caught nine, he still has not broken one, and still they have contained him. Yes, they have. And that was the game plan for Wisconsin. That one is good for win. And Mike Wynn will save possession for UCLA with the first down catch out at the 30-yard line. And six minutes and 10 seconds remaining to play. 21 to 10. Shackerford, the nose guard for Wisconsin, is down. Shaken up. 31-yard line where it is first down, Bruin. Cook hums one to the sideline. Is it a catch? I guess so. Up on the 40. And you're at reception by Stokes. Cook turns inside and just barely avoids the punishment from uh, Eric Unverzak. And you can move the chains as he only needed a yard for his first down. And he ran it for six. So put the ball out at the 47-yard line on the UCLA side. First down, the 550 to play in the ball game. Cook looks down the middle for win. Throws underneath the stroke. The stroke is turned upside down by Ulverstock. Down at the 41-yard line, but it's a first down. Let him catch it short to tackle him. Clock stops when you move the chains on first down with college football. Here's another a little short pop thrown to Brian Adams, his second catch of the day. And that's uh, about a seven-yard pickup down to the 35 of Wisconsin. Wisconsin is just playing a loose zone. The linebackers are sitting off a good, good eight, nine yards. Somewhere along the way here, though, you're going to have to get in good space. Tighten it up a little bit. Yep. I'm going to have to get on him because you, you pick your part to get that much room. There's another one. Thrown behind J.J. Uh, Stokes, though. That's Cook. Oh, bad pass there because he had his man clean and clear. Yes, it's miscommunication. Either Stokes came in too far or Cook didn't throw it in far enough. And after you've played 11 games, you should be on the same page. 21 of 33 for Cook, 222 yards of the ball game. His team is down by 11, 21 to 10. And we're at five minutes to play in this 80th Rose Bowl game. Now they get a little pressure on him, but he breaks up the pressure by completing the pass to Brian Allen, the tight end. And he gets another UCLA first down. Four fifty four to play. He runs it inside the 20, close to the 18. Here. 
We get word that Lamarck Shackerford is uh, all right. Just got the wind knocked out of him. The nose tackle for Wisconsin. He should be back in the ball. Game. Second down and six. And Shackerford's back in. That nose guard. Got to get some pressure on Cook. He's picking him apart. Coach for the ball. And he's down inside the 10. First and goal to go UCLA. Just inside the Wisconsin 10. He's going to come down and break. Look at the 29 messengers way to the inside of the field. And he breaks across him anyway. Nice job of West Wisconsin just getting there. Holding him up. First and goal from the 9 yard line for UCLA. First and goal Bruins. a penalty when was the intended receiver and Kenny Gales ran over it before the ball got there UCLA is moving the football almost with random ease right now as Wisconsin goes to the prevent top of your screen Gales number three sees it the entire way he just needs to avoid the receiver to get to the football Clock stops at 3.53 to play in the game. The football is marked at the five. It is first down and goal, UCLA. Brooks got it. Throw it. Throws it away. That, that, was got pretty close. Legs. <laughs> that was pretty close. He's six four and a half and two eighteen. He's kind of tall and thin. Okay. He got those long legs. Uh, I mean, that was real close to being a touchdown. All the way to the left side of your screen, Stokes. No, no, he's out. He's no. on the back line. Even from that far away, and he'd see his foot is on the line or out. Yeah. <laughs> Long-legged fellow. Incomplete. Pass intended for Kevin Jordan. And Scott Nelson defending. Stokes' 12 receptions is a Rose Bowl record Scott for Nelson, receiving. Uh, I thought Pat Richter Wisconsin. had 13 balls when he played here. He had 11. Okay. So uh, Pat Richter, who is now the athletic director at Wisconsin, and the man is as responsible as anybody for this whole turnaround and fortune for them. So Stokes has now passed Pat Richter. Third down and goal. And UCLA is back in this ball game. The decision is one or two. Two. He's going two. Big decision right here. right here as the receiver is going to try to run right in this area he's going to try to get him the ball everything clears out and the umpire knocks him off his course and it's a five point lead for wisconsin with three minutes and 38 seconds to play team up there for wisconsin the deepest man is around the 12 yard line they're expecting onside but they don't get it it's Keith Jackson at the eight. Jackson is down 
hard at the 18. So Notre Dame comes from behind to edge Texas A&M in the Mobile Cotton Bowl 24-21. Right here, we've got three minutes, 33 seconds to play in the Rose Bowl. Wisconsin leading UCLA 21 to 16. The Bruins have turned it over six times today. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, Bob Goodrich has been producing, Drew Estikoff has been directing, and a whole lot of folks. And a been a festive day. The Wisconsin people have made it a festive Rose Bowl with their enthusiasm. This is Brent Moss bouncing up the middle and almost popped out of there. He almost got away out to the 25-yard line. Shane Jasper made the tackle. Our crowd today is 101,237. Now, true, that is far off the attendance record at the Rose Bowl, but it's a thousand more than the listed capacity since they reconfigured the Rose Bowl in preparation for the World Cup to be played here later this year in July. What they do, they widened the field yep. and took out some of the lower seats. Yep, they did. Bevel gives to Moss. There's a first down. Brent Moss for the 35-yard line. Big ball game. The 11th time this year he's gone past 100 yards. Today he's carried it 33 times and picked up 143 yards. And again, I'm reminded for the 10,000th time about John McKay's comment when he was asked how come O.J. got the ball 30 or more times a game. And John said, why not? It ain't heavy. <laughs> The rest of the nation is seeing now what the Midwest and the Big Ten saw all year, and that is Wisconsin running game and just running out the clock at the end of the ball game. Two minutes and 20 seconds to play, and Moss again pounding up the middle for about three yards. Moss has been the main story. Fletcher's had his moments too, though. I should say he has. 2.15 to play in a ball game, and we've got a timeout. Anthony that Nell B.J. was inaugurated, and a guy named Vander Kellen, that sixth Rose Bowl passing record, an All-American in Pat Rickard. A Richter had 11 receptions. He is now the athletic director in Wisconsin. They lost that ball game to Southern California, as Pete Bethard had a huge day, too. And so, if I remember, did Jimmy Kane the against Wisconsin. It is second down and six for the Badgers. They lead by five points. Last time the Bruins had the ball, just a few minutes ago, they moved it down the field with relative ease as Wisconsin went to the prevent. John Laurie. Ball, ball start. Offense. Five it's yards. against Finally Wisconsin. And they're here looking down at winning this... Uh, Rose Bowl game, another two minutes and 15 seconds. Moss going around the corner on second down and 11. And he's a yard short of a first down. He picked up 10 yards on that carry. They put two wideouts over there on that side, and he just turned it into an old-fashioned power sweep and almost got a first down. The other thing Alvarez did was increase the home attendance by 81% from when he first got there to where it was this year. Their attendance was way down. UCLA spends a timeout stopping the clock at 2.01. They have one timeout remaining. Wisconsin has all three. Third down and one. Jameer Miller nailed it down. He would not let the stack fall forward. And the Bruins call their last timeout. UCLA takes timeout. A mi minute 53 to play. <laughs> Jurgen Bowl is next. But this one is not over. Mm -mm. It's fourth down and one. A minute 53. Well, you your don't dare go for it. Here, well, your you? first decision is whether or not you go for it or not. Oh, uh, if you don't make it, UCLA still has to score. Safest thing is to punt the ball away, make UCLA go, go the, the distance. That's right. Go as far as you can make them go. 
His punters, though, his, his kickers have not been the strength of the team this year. As you mentioned, his punter has not punted a whole lot. That's a bite. And then his place kickers have not done very well also. Last kick uh, wasn't very good. So Veit's got to buckle down this time and uh, hit a good punt. He got a good roll out of it, which killed it on the 10-yard line. Of course, the, the punt coverage and the punt return are important right here. Low kick. Taken at the 20 by Gidry. And down. Oh, my goodness, he almost popped out of there. He, Gidry got all the way back to the 38-yard line. So the young freshman, the redshirt freshman from Cerrito, makes a big play for UCLA. And you've got a Badger shaking up on the field. And they'll go out of the shotgun. Cooks pass, short, tied in. Allen to the 45. That's a pickup of seven yards. And for those of you who like prevent defenses or don't, that's what Wisconsin is in, a three-man rush. The four defensive backs are deep. The linebackers are three deep, forcing him to throw the ball inside. The clock stops when they move the chains on first down. Second down and three. There's the first down. J.J. Stokes to the Wisconsin 47. Clock stops at 111. College football, the clock stops. While, when you make a first down, while they move the chains, as soon as they have the chains up in place, the clock stops and starts then, and it starts running. So take advantage of it offensively. Get your, you get your team at the line of scrimmage, get the play call, and as soon as they start the clock, get the play snap. It was Stokes shaken up, so he has to leave the field because time was taken for him. So he's out of the ball game, and Mike Wynn replaces him. It was Wynn that kept the drive alive the last time they scored with a huge third down catch. Cook takes off up the middle. Got some room. Does a hook slide at the Wisconsin 36 for another first down. And first downs are critical because they stop the clock. If he doesn't pick up the first down, they lose probably, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 seconds in organization. Get the players back. I think his options were there if the backers have dropped off and they're in the three-man rush and we split them, you go, and he did. And he very well may have had a first down. And whether or not it's a first down, it doesn't matter right here because the clock did get stopped yep. and you have a chance to organize your next play. 59 seconds to play in the game. It is a first down. Of course, Donahue and Homer Smith, his offensive coordinator, have gone through these situations all year long. At the end of practice, all right, you got no timeouts, you need a touchdown, let's get out there and do it. Strokes is back. Clock going. To the sideline, tied in Allen. The fourth throw. Didn't get the ball far enough, the clock is still running. Wisconsin no longer is in that prevent for those of you who can't see downfield. They are in a regular defensive set. Second down and a long four. Throws a homer. Misses Stokes. Scott Nelson, actually the only man who had a chance to catch it. And he was thrown so hard he couldn't catch it. And the incomplete pass now stops the clock with 25 seconds. Right. It is 25 seconds between now and the time that Hearts will beat again in Wisconsin. Third and five for UCLA. Third and four. Free play. Free play. The Badgers were offside. And they whistle them. They say no play now. They'll reset the clock to Unless 25. I don't know. Maybe somebody might have moved. Yeah, they'll reset the clock. They did. Against UCLA. The man in the red shirt was the one that was most obvious. 
having penetrated the neutral zone, but there was movement by someone on the white side of the ball. That's the call. Yeah, it's a good call, too, because the right guard does... The, the, the right guard does move right here. The right guard is going to move, and then the man over him will move. Yep, he did. Raised up. He flinched from the defender. Yep. Move. So it's third down and nine now with 25 seconds. Cook gets it away. Pass is caught by Stokes. He's inside the 20 and down at the 18-yard line. And time will stop because it's a first down. 15 seconds. They almost have to start throwing it into the end zone now. Stokes has a huge size advantage over everybody in the Wisconsin secondary. They go quickly. No, you can't do that. You don't want to throw the ball. You've got no time out. You've got no time out. Throw the ball. It. It's over. It's over. It's over. Cook tried to surprise him, tried to run it up the middle. Didn't have a timeout to save him. Was knocked down. The clock runs out. The Wisconsin Badgers have defeated the UCLA Bruins by a score of 21 to 16. And it was a great day for the drummer boy.